So, this is the first match of my quarterfinal of the Wakefield Regional. I was paired against Luke Dunscombe and we were chosen to be on the stream. So there will be a link in the description to the stream footage of the match, which I suggest you go and check out first because it's always a lot more hype seeing the live footage than the analysis because the analysis kind of ruins the hype. So he's going to be having a very, very similar team to me. He had Kyogre Xerneas, but he did have a Salamence, which was effectively the Rayquaza. And he also had a Raichu and a Sizzle, so he did have very, very similar teams. So he's going to lead off with his Salamence and his Kyogre, and I'm going to lead off with my Gengar and my Kyogre. So he's actually going to Primal Reverse first, which does indicate that he is a timid one. He could very easily be a modest max speed Kyogre, and we could have speed tied. But the more likely uh, situation is that he is timid, so that actually works out a lot better for me than him information wise because I could still be timid Kyogre in his eyes because I could have just lost the speed time so that works out quite nicely because I do have Icy Wind Speed Control ready to put my Kyogre faster than his so here he's going to Mega Revolve with Salamence get the speed boost over my Gengar and I did assume he was going to protect but I wanted the Icy Wind on, the Ky on his Kyogre as well so that mine could outspeed and he is going to protect his Salamence which is a good play so now he doesn't get the speed drop and he'll be able to threaten me next turn He's going to Icy Wind onto the Kyogre and get the speed drop, doing almost no damage at all, but the speed is the more important thing here. And he is actually going to be going for Scald rather than Water Spout. I guess he was looking for the burn chance to break through my Sash on Gengar and get the straight up KO, but the Water Spout would have done, still done some chip to Kyogre, but really not that much. So I guess Scald did make a lot of sense. So Water Spout onto his Kyogre, doing decent damage. Not not quite a three hit KO because of the Icy Wind Chip, but here he's going to reveal Tailwind on his Salamence, which was quite annoying because Icy Wind would have put him slower, but I guess if he wasn't going for Tailwind, he would have gone for Hyper Poison KO with my Gengar. So it's actually quite good that Gengar got off this Icy Wind, doing quite a lot of damage to the Salamence. Now my Kyogre is faster than his for this turn, so I am going to Ice Beam first before his move, knocking out the Salamence. I could have gone for Water Spout if I'd have known he was going for Tailwind, but... You know, like, I was expecting to probably take a double edge with the Salamence, the worst case scenario, so I actually went for Ice Spout and uh, Ice Spout, Ice Beam, and didn't capitalize on my Water Spout opportunity, but he is going to Water Spout this turn, revealing that he probably doesn't have Origin Pulse, which is good information again. So he's going to bring in his Raichu, which is going to threaten my Kyogre, and I'm going to bring in my Togetic. And this was actually the only appearance in the entire tournament for this Togetic, so enjoy it while it lasts. So I'm going to protect my Kyogre from the Volt Tackle. I was expecting him to Volt Tackle into the Kyogre rather than the Togetic, because even if I went for Follow Me, it would just be directed to Togetic anyway, and in case I didn't, he would knock out my Kyogre. But I'm able to get my own Tailwind up matching his, and that's really big because because of the Icy Wind Drops, my Kyogre is faster than his. And now I can follow me away this Raichu's Volt Tackle, sacrificing the Togetic, but it definitely did its job because now my Kyogre survives. Togetic does go down. It's super bulky, but no way it's living a Volt Tackle at, at half health. And I, he, I don't get to see if he's a Sash variant or not because he just breaks his own potential Sash with Volt Tackle, but that's fine. I just get the KO and do a huge chunk of this Kyogre, putting it in range of extreme speed, which is really, really nice. Yeah, he's obviously not going to go for the Water Spout because of his... We could, like, lower HP, he's going to go for the Skull Burn, and he doesn't get it, which is really nice. Puts me in a great position. He's going to bring out his Scizor as his final Pokemon, and I'm going to bring out my Rayquaza. So that puts me in a really, really good position, because my Rayquaza is threatening the one-shot onto this Scizor, and my Kyogre is faster than his. So even if he bullet punches, there's not really anything he can do. He probably could have bullet punched to try and see what my item was on Rayquaza if he got a crit and brought it down to Sash, but I guess he could see it anyway. There wasn't really anything he could do at this, at this point. Dragon's Ascent onto Scizor. I didn't want to reveal Overheat and I didn't want to miss. So I was assuming that I wouldn't knock out the Scizor because mine survived a Dragon's Ascent earlier in the match, but that was against a strange EV Rayquaza, so I don't know. But it does actually pick up the one shot on this Scizor, which is really nice information going into the future that I don't have to overheat if I don't need to, so I don't have to risk the miss, and I am going to water spout. I was expecting to take that final bit of chip needed on the sizzle and then KO Kyogre with it as well, but wasn't needed. Kyogre goes down, and that's the first game of the quarterfinals. So, on to game two.